gloves are off, the heels are on. It's Let Me Finish with Emmy Award winning sports reporter Susie Schuster and senior West Coast editor of Vanity Fair, Krista Smith. It's not easy to get a word in edgewise, but they'll try. And now, here's Krista and Susie. Hi there, hope you've had a great week. Thank you for joining us for Let Me Finish. I'm Krista, this is Susie, and there are 21 days left yeah. until NFL kickoff. But who's counting? I'm so excited. Uh, we have a great show for you today because the crazies are out. Susie, what's on the docket? All right, here's what we have today. We've got Brett's back, Roger's back is to the wall. Can any wall contain LeBron James's ego? I don't think so. Eli Manning may not have an ego, but he does have 12 stitches. Has anyone told Tim Tebow he's no longer playing in Florida? How dumb can you be, we discuss. And, of course, as always, things that we love. But Krista, right off the bat, hooray, Brett's back. Yay Who told you, by Susie. the way? What did I tell you? You did. He sat there, marionette-wise, playing the strings, and back he is, fresh from the bayou. And it was only a news story for, what, seven days? I mean, it, what, they likened it to the OJ and following the Bronco around uh, L.A. back in uh yeah, Vajante Seiko, the, the tight end, said, uh, where's I mean, the white I mean, i got to be honest with you. Beautiful. I'm a little over the Brett Favre drama. It's just a little much for me. The three wise men flying down to Mississippi, the jet, the car, talking him into it. What, are they going around his acres on his tractor? Can I, can I set this up? I mean, enough, like Brett. Can I set this up? First of all, you're so full of it. Enough. You love the drama of LeBron James, but you can't take love. one of the best players in the history of the NFL coming back at age 41. I what love it. What is wrong with this? That's is so not, good. That, you're missing my point I do love Brett Favre I love watching him I love what it means for the Vikings I just think it's enough already I think the ego and the excess what about all the other players that show up just just come out with it already you there signed were, a two-year contract for 25 million enough there were some issues of course we do know that yes the three wise men Ryan Longwell Jared Allen and Steve Hutchinson did go down via private jet which I don't always agree with but I will hop on the minute someone offers uh, a ride um, I do the, the guys did go down. They did pick up Brett Favre. They, they implored him to come back for the second year in a guaranteed two-year deal, by the way. So it wasn't like he did anybody a favor, but he did say, I did the guys a favor. I did come back. Now, the question we have now is, was it the ankle that kept him from coming back, or was it his disdain for Brad Childers? Because now it sounds like, Krista, we've got some mutiny going mm -hmm. on in the locker room. A lot of guys don't mm -hmm. like him. They say Brett Favre doesn't trust him, mm -hmm. doesn't trust his offensive prowess, say that he has become an ego freak. Basically, you know, the owner and the director of player personnel live in New York. So they basically right. have one other guy there that is actually in Minnesota. So is Brad doing too much? Well, I think, Susie, the most indisputable thing about Brett Favre is he is a leader, perhaps mm -hmm. the greatest leader the NFL has ever had. So I'm not so worried about Brad Childress as I am about you know, Brett Favre, what he means to that team is pretty clear. Okay, those guys are going to get down, they're going to do the song and dance. And from what I understand from what Favre even said is he wasn't coming. Mm -hmm. Like they had it, they actually talked him into it. It didn't take him long to say yes, but he was on the fence, genuinely. So I think But do you a, think he was on the fence because he didn't want to play, because his ankle all hurt, of or it, because he hated the coach? I think he's going to be 41 years old. His ankle isn't healing the way it's supposed to heal. He certainly took a sweet time in getting the surgery. I mean, he knew in January he injured it. He knew in April that he needed surgery. He didn't get surgery until the end of May. Yeah, May 21st. So, so clearly he, you know, he, these decisions were weighing on him. And if I was his wife, I'd be like, enough already. Oh my God. But, you, no, she's desperate to get him out of the house. Like she's like, kiln? <laughs> uh, I mean, hello, I'm guess. back on, she's back on the circuit. The, you the think question, she's so happy he's gone? But, let me wait ask a minute. Wait, what? Do you think, in all honesty, that he can go, all right? This is a guy, last three seasons yes. have not ended well with interceptions. Mm -hmm. Do you think he can go 16 games at 100%? This guy think? has played 309 games straight, my friend. He played when you his wife no had doubt. breast cancer. He played when his dad passed away. This guy is awesome. He's solid and great. He had his ankle repaired. He's running without a limp. They're going to protect him. He's got a good O-line. That's what's important for a quarterback. He's right. got Adrian Pearson to run the ball for him. he's never been injured. I mean, the guy's got an incredible record in terms of injuries. He does Knock have a full gray hair and gray beard, yeah. which I love. It's fantastic. I mean, and let's, let, let's just hear from Brett Favre about all the expectations that they have in Minnesota. You know, I, the expectations are high here, as they should be. Um, yeah, from, from my standpoint, I can't make any guarantees that I would. I'm just going to do everything I can to help this football team. I spoke with the guys this morning. I think they know I'm sincere and honest. You know what I loved? He said the sincere and honest. He was really sincere and honest by saying that nothing on me is 100%. But then I have to ask you, what 41-year-old is 100%? Like, I don't well, care if you're Brett Favre or not. I did. I, 
I do think that if you're looking at this objectively, and you did, if you didn't love him in Wranglers, and if and if we were talking about a different football quarterback, he didn't sound utterly enthused for me. I, it did. It sounded a little half mass. Oh press God. conference, but he you sounded don't like get he was him. reluctant. You don't there. get him. I, this is all choreographed. Aw, oh, shucks, me. I'll come back and I'll help you all down to the Super Bowl again. We have, I came back for my guys. It's really not about me. It's about winning for the team. Baby, this is totally choreographed. It's He's a nice guy him. from Kiln. You don't think he's excited? He's like, yeah, I'm out there, baby. He's putting the red shirt back on. He's out there like, hey, y'all. Hey, brother. What's up? You're my guy. Like, he doesn't know anybody's names, but he's just happy to be there. All right, all right, let's see. Uh, let's see how he does. I don't think he's going to be able to go down. I think Minnesota looks great, but I don't see them uh, I don't see them in Dallas. He did get more money, you know. He was supposed to get 13, now he's getting 16 and a half with hmm. incentives up to 20 hmm. million. I think there's going to be other problems in that locker room other than Brad Childress. I, I honestly believe that there is going to, that Brett Favre, if you're another player on that team, I'd be a little like, as a well, spectator, I'm, I'm over it. As we now know, there were a couple tensions last season. He started calling plays himself, ignoring his coach on the sidelines. I would, too. I'm Brett Favre. I know what I'm doing. Shut up. Now, the other thing is, if you recall, <laughs> yes. when Brad Childress was running the offense for Andy Reid in, in um, yes. Philly, T.O. said to him, don't talk to me. You talk to me when I talk to you first. Now, I wonder if that kind of attitude is going to carry over to a lot of the guys in the offense there in Minnesota, because I just think there's a lot of undermining going on. All right. We'll see. 21 more days. Oh, let's talk about Chris's favorite guy in the world, the guy who's got no ego whatsoever, LeBron, third person James. <laughs> okay, LeBron James, in case you missed it, go out, run, do not walk on your iPad, buy it, GQ. I cannot believe I'm promoting another uh, competitor's magazine. Wait, but can I go back to that shot? enough of LeBron. Who points to their muscle? Like, that's so cliche. He's Le <laughs> I don't know why. So, talk about a hater. Susie's a hater. I can't explain why. I'm on the I list. Love I'm on the list of the people that he's keeping check. I love that he keeps a checklist and. and it's it just, it's too good. I mean, listen, Barkley and him, they go at it. You know what? Here's the thing. Everyone tolerates Brett Favre, but no one's going to tolerate 25-year-old LeBron James. And everyone squawks about, oh, he hasn't won anything. He hasn't done this. Listen, the guy last season had the, the best season in 15 years, okay? He's an amazing player. He's a star. He's a genius. He's got personality. He's a corporation, and I love him. And I'm buying it. And if there were stock, I'd buy it all. Oh, please. You can have it. Here's why he's newsworthy, okay? In GQ magazine, he says the following. We hated Cleveland growing up. When we grew up in Akron, they were the bigger city kids, and they looked down on us. Oh, you poor thing. So well, now, you're, now you hate Cleveland after they paid you all this money. You talked about how much you loved well, Cleveland. Well, you're taking it Suddenly out of context. Keep you're your mouth shut and play ball. My and God. he did, by the way, keep his mouth shut and play ball for mm -hmm. them for seven years. But he grew up in Akron. You don't like Cleveland. You don't like the big city kids. But why not just be quiet now and be classy? Because he can't be quiet and classy because that coach came out and all bold type wrote that letter that owner, really wasn't classy. Gilbert. Okay, I, He's responding to that, which now it makes sense with GQ. I wish Vanity Fair had that story. Talking about how, why do you think he wrote the letter to Akron? Because that's his hometown. Well, you need to get your ass on the plane. Oh. You need to book love. that story because you love him so much. Here's what he said about Dan Gilbert, and the looks owner. great on that. I mean, let's just say for does, an and image. that outfit's ridiculous. Here's what he said about the owner, Dan Gilbert. He said, I don't think he ever cared about LeBron. Hello, what? third person again? He never cared about LeBron. I'm going to start he never to cared Susie about me? the Susie. I, I think you should try it. I mean, for, uh, really. Well, what does Brett Favre say? He just says all the team. He doesn't say oh, Brett Favre. Oh, my guys. You know, it's just about, just about the team. Uh, and here's what I also wanted to mention. As you all know who watched the show, I love Charles Barkley. I love how outspoken he is. He said about LeBron and his little Twitter about anybody who's been saying things negative about me, uh, about me, I'm keeping a checklist and I know who you are. Charles said, hey baby, I'm right here. I'm on TNT every week. I'm on TV. You got a problem with me? Come and get me. Here's what he said about Charles. He said, um, <coughs> he, said uh, he was trying to be funny. I bet it wasn't funny to me. Well, Okay, well, what's wrong with us? Oh, sack up, be a man. Come on, it wasn't funny to me. I mean, this whole thing about I know who well, you listen, are. You guys are be you, more insecure. But but I think LeBron has taken it on the chin for this. He got huge ratings for ESPN. It was poorly executed, not his fault. Okay, he gave the money to charity. Last time I checked, you know, Charles Barkley was getting arrested for uh, you know on his uh, to get a sexual favor in Arizona. You know, who with doesn't pedal to the metal? So 
give LeBron a break, will you? I'm going to work on you and work on you and work on you. And when Miami Heat is is winning and you're watching and we're and Chris Bosh does more say, entourage. And <laughs> I am so over LeBron. I'm so over. I, I just cannot wait for them not to go to the championship next year. You heard her here first. I just said it. Fine. Speaking of championships and whether or not guys go back or not, Eli Manning. We saw him getting absolutely battered the other night in the Jets-Giants preseason game in the New Meadowlands. Three-inch scar, three-inch gash, 12 stitches. I'm so sorry for Eli. I, come on, he's in the NFL, people. He got his he. he it's, what do you want to do? He had to get his hair cut for this some stitches. This is week one of the it's preseason. It's a surface wound. Just a flesh wound. Okay, I don't think the Giants, I don't have much hope for the Giants Let's just anyway. watch this because this is ugly. Uh, let's roll this clip and then you can see just a, a, a lovely hit. Brandon Jacobs' his own teammate. It sounds like Eli, number one, didn't buckle his chin strap and also made the wrong call. He called yes. a play and he went the wrong direction, so Brandon just undercuts him. And then what happens is, is Jimmy Leonard comes around, his face mask goes straight into yeah. Eli's forehead. Kablooey. But he didn't have a concussion. No, nothing, but he can't put I think on it toughens for him up a little bit. I like it on him. Will not play against the Steelers. I just like Eli. He's got such that aw shucks mentality of guys in the South. I wonder what it is with quarterbacks from the South. It just has, it's not about it me. Looks it's like about it's the cabbage team. patched all to me. You know what somebody was saying? I'm like, sorry. He, he's not hot to me. He's not hot. Mm. But one of the sports radio guys was saying, like, with that face, maybe it'll, like you said, kind of maybe it'll improve it all. Yeah, but I like, think it'll toughen up, get a haircut, get a flat top, cut it away, get a scar. I mean, what's hotter than Sean Payton and that scar, you know, that little thing he's got going on? You like that? Yeah, I do. What about Frank Beamer from Virginia Tech? No? Yeah, I like I, hey, I, listen. I don't deal with it all. I shouldn't say that. Frank Beamer's a great guy. I think he was in an unfortunate hay fire incident as a child, so I nice, take that Susie, back. Nice. Talk about nice. insensitive. Oy. Nice. All right. Uh, time how to about move your boyfriend? On. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a segue. How about your boyfriend, uh, Tim Tebow? Another, well, another, a lot I mean, going on in Denver. Let's just talk about it right now. Josh McDaniels, I said if he won 10 games last year, I'd be wearing a hoodie. Obviously, we didn't win 10 games. I'm not wearing a hoodie, and I'm not drinking the punch just yet. But I do think jackass. it's brilliant that he cast Tim Tebow, and suddenly, out of nowhere, everyone is talking about Denver. It's a, a, a Denver, 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 Tebow. No one would be talking about Denver right now at all if it weren't for Tim Tebow, who has yet really, what did he play? He had his first... Uh, First, uh, Here's time where your boy is not turf. so smart, okay? Here's where your boy is not so smart. This is not the SEC. This is not a roll tide game, okay? You don't run for a touchdown and tuck and try to jump into the end zone. Pass the ball, run it in, you know, maybe, maybe a little slant pattern, something else. But he basically tried to put his little chin into the end zone and Abdul Hodge former Iowa Hawkeye linebacker, but he came over and just decimated pummeled. him, okay? He pummeled him. And by the way, went off, clutching his left side. Let's face it, last two days in practice, not practicing, clutching the left side. So but this is how all, much but, is but, that? You think Tebow's hurt? I, I, of course he's hurt. Of course he's injured, but he, a little bit, minorly. I don't think it's devastating. And second of all, what are you forgetting? He's the third-string quarterback. No, he's not. You've got not. Kyle Orton. You've got Brady Quinn. It's not like he's going to start on, you know, in the opening season. He was going to go in and play a little bit of games. So they got two other quarterbacks if anything it shows his enthusiasm and it also shows that he's going to learn he has to learn on the game and i love that he went in for that i don't have any problems with that so Do he got injured people would love it if he didn't if he was, didn't walk off a of practice no one would be saying anything you're about crazy. it you're crazy i call me crazy i'm football. from colorado but that's college football that's college and football it's not college football it's not college football. John Elway, don't you remember yeah. that play in the Super Bowl? Yeah. And you know why he did that? He did that because he had to let his teammates know that he was going to do anything he could do to win that but Super Bowl. But he was Bowl. John okay. Elway's different. I don't know. He's John, I mean, Tim like Tebow's you Denver John people. We are Denver. Denver. And what about my favorite, Carmelo Anthony? What are you doing? What are you thinking? Have you heard this story? It's uh, everywhere. I don't know if it's a story or if it's not a story, but everybody has basically Carmelo Anthony suited up for the Knicks uh, by opening gay, and uh, it's very devastating to me, and, it, and obviously to Colorado. But you know, what do you think, Sus? I think it's crazy. I mean, like this is a guy who went to Syracuse. We know that he is, has a big fan base in Greater New York, right? Clearly took them to the promised land there. He had a fat deal in Denver to stay, mm -hmm. so I wonder what happened that's making him now talk about going to New York. The Amare connection will yep. be interesting. Two guys yep. with a little bit of an attitude problem sometimes. Chris I Wade. actually yep. love, I love Amare Stoudemire, so I'd be happy to see them playing together. But I just think it's so interesting. What happened in Denver that made him? Is it? Is it? 
the well, coaching something. situation? I, I feel Is it the like, air I don't, Denver? I don't know enough about it, but it, to me, it, it, I feel like where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. And the New York Post broke the story, and they're like a source close to Carmelo uh, has him going back to the Knicks. So I feel like it, it's, it's enough to make me really, really nervous. Will the pink but Range Rover go there? Well, <laughs> I will say, this is the one thing I don't understand, is uh, Carmelo's, uh, we, I see his uh, new wife uh, every day at preschool in the custom uh, pink Range Rover La here La in Vasquez. Los Angeles. So mm. I don't know, it's a much longer flight from uh, LA to New York than Denver to, to LA. That's certainly see, the case. This is why you watch Let Me Finish. We're also going to hear about a pink <laughs> By the Range way, I've Rover only ever and Carmelo seen Anthony. A pink Range Rover. It's, in one it's sentence. It's kind of staggering. Anyway. It's fantastic. Don't Should do it, Carmelo. Mello. I don't know what Denver would do. Would Tebow injured and Carmelo Anthony in New York. Do they have an, a WNBA team? I wouldn't even know. Hey, um, I'm not sure how to transition yeah. to this, but from a, a positive in New York to yes. a, a nasty negative, uh, Francisco right. Rodriguez, the closer for the Mets last week, decided to take out some aggression on his girlfriend's father. Well, common law. At City Field. Wife, Hold on. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, something. Common law wife BS. Yeah. A, a, in City Field right outside the family room, decides to deck his father, or so a uh, common law father-in-law. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's like a rhyme, it's like a haiku. Common now law. being charged with second degree assault, third degree harassment charges. We have a, I mean look at this, this looks like a perp walk. This is Frankie Rodriguez, this is the, the hopes of the Angels that came up as a reliever behind Troy Percival the year that the Angels won the World Series, I was there when Frankie got off the plane when he was fresh and new and everyone was so excited. The Angels had to know something crazy was going on, as the Mets now know. When they let him go to New York, he got a lot of money. He's been a top closer there. And oh, by the way, now he's on the DQ. So now they don't want to pay him. So this is the beautiful thing about what's going on right now with Omar Minaya and all the Mets guys. The union filed a grievance because, right. of course, everyone wants their money. But if they keep him on he's the screwed. DQ long enough, and they keep him to next season for spring training, release him at 30 to 45 days. They pay him like one and a half million as yep. opposed to like 11. 75 billion. Yeah. yeah, no, it's crazy. It, it, but and even now he loses three million because of anger. Well, it's all about go to anger management, apologize. And you feel bad for the, I feel bad for these athletes. It's, it's again and again, you see this anger management problem that he wasn't being played enough. Who knows what was in his head that made him, you know, assault his father-in-law, but you just can't do it anymore. I mean. It, you can't do it. From assaulting his father-in-law to insult, assaulting the truth. We have breaking yes. news now. Breaking news that Roger Clemens is being indicted for perjury. The feds don't like it when you lie to them. Roger Clemens supposedly going to the Hall of Fame 2013. Roger Clemens has been bad. indicted by the feds for perjury. If you recall, he testified before Congress. I think it was like the government house committee on yep. governmental issues or what have you. The fact of the matter is that he said that he didn't do steroids. He said that he never did steroids, that he was never involved with steroids. He went on 60 Minutes. He said that he did never was involved with steroids. Three counts of false statements, two counts of perjury. Roger Clemens, we're talking one of the most important guys I, in the history of baseball. I don't see how he gets out of it. I mean, I feel like if they've de decided that there's enough evidence to uh, indict him, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in my Vanity Fair experience, uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't smell good. No, Henry doesn't Waxman, when, when, Henry Ma when Henry Waxman wants to come after you, usually he does. But they're basically saying that he, he lied to Congress about charges about PEDs mm -hmm. and per performance enhancing drugs. And um, February 2008, he was there. It's but not Susie, good. He could get 30 here's... years in jail okay, and a one well, and a half million dollar fine. He'll get 15 if to 18 Lindsay if he's Lohan convicted. Gets nine days. I mean, come on, he's but, not going to get 30 years in jail. But the incredible thing to me is that he's not being indicted for doing the actual steroids. No. He's been indicted for, for lying. lying. I mean, why not just apologize? On what planet and what ego does he live in? What bubble does he live in? Does he actually think that he wasn't doing it? Well, it's too late now. Because I actually believe that he thinks he wasn't doing it. I think it's that weird you know there's a split where you go on 60 minutes you lie like that at a certain point in your brain how can you par um, compartmentalize to such a degree Krista I live with at athletes the guys Krista, juiced Krista, up like crazy Krista I live with athletes for so long they know every single thing that goes into their body they know about saccharin and sweet and low so do they you know think everything. he isn't he knew what he was doing so you think then, he, he, what do you think he's going to say now? Oh, I didn't know my trainer was giving me vitamin shots. Brian I mean, McNamee, I think he's going to, it's going to be a he said, she said, he said. With Brian McNamee, the trainer that 
also has been indicted as well, and it's going to be a, a back and forth thing. But yes, Roger, Cl this is a sad day for baseball. I really think but so. But it's also a bigger issue that I actually like to talk about. What if everybody's doing it? When does it stop being a story? When do you stop? Is it illegal? Most of the NFL. I mean, look at those guys. Look at baseball. They've all come out. Most people have, have admitted it in one way or another. I mean, at what point does it? Do, does everyone just accept it? And I'm not talking about a cork bat or putting right. plaster in your boxing glove or actually really cheating. But all these guys are involved in all kinds of like blood doping and, and the drug. I mean, it, come on. I think you're right. How I, do you okay. regulate it? Hold How on. do you say this one gets away with it, this one doesn't? And I think Lance Armstrong, right. okay. by the way, we're going to be talking about Lance Armstrong here in the next six months as well. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. As we all know, he was gimpy yeah. for most of his career, right? He always had an issue. A he always had a groin issue. It was always, ah, mm -hmm. oh, the pull groin. So we know that a lot of these guys would medicate to get better and get back out there. A lot of guys say, well, if I wanted to stay in the playing field, I had to dope up. But the fact of the matter is, you, you, if you're not going to come clean, then what's the point? Andy Pettit, his, one of his former right. best friends and teammates, came forward. He said, I admit it. I took some enhancing drugs to get back. I took human growth hormone. I didn't, Andy Pettit did, of course, um, and saying that he had to get back and he was so sorry and so remorseful. What happened? What happened? Hugs and kisses. Alex Rodriguez right. comes out and says, God. yes, I took him. He's back and he's dating Cameron Diaz. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like at a certain point. But it's his, you know why? I'll tell you why. Because he's the rocket. He's pig-headed. He's out there on the mound by himself. He's still out there. He's pitching against everybody. Well, and if you're going to pitch and play in that elite class at, at, at his age, how are you going to do it and not do drugs? I mean, but I, I love the detail about his, all his kids are K's for, for strikeout. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, what are you going to do with that kind of ego? I don't know. He's going to have to pay the piper one way or other. It's not good. It's not good. You should see his wife, by the way, Debbie. She's ripped. So maybe they had a joint account. I don't know. But man, I don't know if you saw her on SI a yeah. couple times, but I mean, she's shredded. <laughs> she's shredded. She makes uh, Brooklyn Decker look chunko. I mean, she is. Sh the, oh, the lady man. is shredded. Yeah, um, you know, it's one last point about this Roger Clemens debacle. Is he and Barry Bonds? Barry Bonds is actually has been indicted. He's scheduled to go on trial next March. Both Bonds and Clemens are scheduled to appear on the 2013 ballot. So now, my question to you is, and I'll answer it myself first. Bossy. Uh, what a surprise. Bossy. Okay. Um, would you vote for him on the Hall of Fame ballot? And I got to tell you, I used to say, oh, whatever happens on the field stays on the field, but if I'm really pissed. If he admitted it, yes. Yeah. Now, no. Because now we don't know if how well he pitched was because of what he was taking. This arrogance of 60 minutes. I mean, yeah. I just am assuming, obviously, I'm doing the, the wrong thing, the un-PC thing to assume right. that he's guilty, but I'm just going to assume that he's guilty. Right. How dumb can you be, Roger? Yeah. And how dumb can you be, Renee Gork? <laughs> You're an idiot. Okay, so let me set this up for you. This is a woman who's on the air doing Razorbacks radio down in this is Arkansas. This favorite. Okay? This makes me insane. So here's a woman, of course, you know how I feel about, I'm, I'm very supportive of all of my comrades um, uh, that are out there broadcasting. But here's a woman who decides on a rainy day to go to work covering the Razorbacks, covering the Hogs football press conference with Bobby Wait, what's Petrino. what's the name of her radio station? What's it called? Like K-Hog, I think. K-Hog. She wears a gator's hat because it was raining out and I had to put a hat on and I didn't realize which one it was, but I'm an alum. So the last time Bobby Petrino saw a gator's uniform was, oh, by the way, last year when his team lost What to did Florida. you say earlier that Susie equated it to he was vomiting blood he was, I mean, since he, he was lost like, to the so gators? She, so she, yeah, he's been spitting blood since that <laughs> loss. I mean, like... If, I don't if know you're in the that SEC, she get fired. If you're in the SEC, Krista, here's how it is. It's you and there's Florida, okay? Everyone hates Florida. You wear it. You work for K-Hog, you moron. I mean, what are you doing? It was raining. I put a hat on. Okay, a mirror, a rear view mirror. Did you put a little Well, that's what happens on? when I mean, you work in radio because there's no, there's no video. There's no television. I've worked in radio. You still care what you look like. You, you work for K-Hog. Oh, all right, let's get to our favorite things. All right. Best part of the show today. We've got a couple doozies for you. My favorite thing happens to be a little bit of Hollywood thrown in here. One of a great girl named Gabrielle Union, who happens to be dating a guy named Dwayne Wade, who who's happens that? to what? play for who's he going to be playing with next year? Anyway, Miami Heat. She's they've been dating for some time. As we know, he was married to Siobhan Wade. They have two young children. Crazy. And Siobhan had taken uh, Gabrielle to, or uh, Gabby, as I call her. Uh, to court saying that they had had indecent sexual activity in front of their children and in front of her children with uh, Dwayne and caused them uh, emotional distress. Anyway, good for you, Gabby. It was thrown out of court. She's uh, been proven innocent.
I so mean, NBA wives. I era. love it. But I love this photo. Do they have the same earrings? And I want to know, did he give them the same earrings? <laughs> what about that? Gabby, get involved. Find I mean, out. The NBA wives are a plate full of crazy. Yeah. Well, she knows what she's getting into because she was married before. So she was uh, married to an uh, NFL guy, Chris Howard. So she knows what she's in for. I think she can handle Has it. Has she met Jackie Christie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. Okay, here's my favorite thing. Hard Knocks on HBO. It's training camp with the Jets. It is the greatest watch of all time because you actually see coaching going on. I am riveted. I can't stop watching it. It's so great. If you don't like F-bombs, you might want to back off. What annoys me, of course, is that um, Tony Dungy, who was a wonderful right. guy and, and is the former coach of the Colts now um, with, the, with NBC, he is, he is real conservative, and he's all upset that Rex Ryan is cursing on camera. It's Rex Ryan! And, and by the way, you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. But the fact of the matter is you see real coaching. Rex Ryan loves football, and these guys love it. And you are really seeing behind-the-scenes stuff that is so fascinating, so intense. Wait. Real coaching going on. The best part, of course, from last night was Antonio Cromarty, who's a cornerback out of Florida State who I had in school. And um, he goes on and he recites all of the kids he has. Well, he's got so many kids he forgot their names. And, in fact, at one point he mentioned five three-year-olds. Nice. Now, Ouch. what about my boyfriend, uh, Mark Wait, Sanchez? Hold on, How's hold he? on. Five three-year-olds. What do you think that means? He's been busy. He's been busy. Five three-year-olds. Crow Marty, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your boyfriend, um, Mark Sanchez, you would have been so... See, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you watching the show? So it's your you boyfriend, like Mark, Mark Sanchez? Sanchez. Well, now I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in my TiVo, for sure. He's got to man up and just be the leader of the team and stop saying, oh, I'm sorry, I had a bad play. You learn a lot about Mark Sanchez. It, it, she's tough. All right, well, thanks for joining us. That's our show for today. We can't wait to see you next week. We'll be back. Have a great week. See you soon.